All right, let's dive right in. In the next few minutes, we're going to break down five key financial concepts that can seem kind of complicated, but are absolutely essential for making financial decisions with a bit more confidence. Let's get to it. So, let me ask you something right off the bat. Are you an investor, a speculator, or a gambler? And that's not just a label, you know. It really defines your whole strategy. By the time we're done here, you'll have a much clearer idea of where you stand. To answer that question, we have to start with the foundation of literally every single financial decision. Risk. And here's the most important part. Not all risk is created equal. The sharpest minds in finance know the difference between the risk you can control and the ones you just have to work around. So let's focus on the risk you can do something about. The number one tool for that is a word you've probably heard a million times. Diversification. It's way more than just a buzzword. It's your main line of defense against a very specific type of financial danger. This controllable risk has a name. Unsystematic risk. You know that old saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Well, this is it. Exactly. It's the risk tied to just one company or one industry. And the most critical thing to know about it is you can actively, strategically reduce it. And that brings us to the other side of the coin. Systematic risk. See, while diversification is great for protecting you if one company goes under, it can't save you from risks that hit the entire market. Think a recession or a big global event. That's the kind of risk that, well, everyone is exposed to. So when you're thinking about your total risk, just remember this simple little formula. It's always a mix of the company-specific stuff you can manage and the market-wide stuff that you can't. Okay, so understanding the types of risk. That's step one. Step two is actually having the right tools in your toolkit to analyze everything. So let's look at three essential ideas that investors use all the time to check out their assets and the market as a whole. Now, our first tool sounds really complex covariance. But the idea behind it is actually pretty simple. It's just a way to measure how two different stocks, for instance, move in relation to each other. I like to think of it like two dancers. If they're moving perfectly in sync, that's high positive covariance. But if one zigs while the other zags, their covariance is low or maybe even negative. Investors use this to try and build a more balanced portfolio. So covariance helps us see how assets move together. But there's another really important factor. How easy is it to get your money out when you need it? And that brings us to a super practical question. Just how fast can you turn an asset into cold, hard cash? And that concept is called liquidity. Put simply, it's all about being able to sell something fast without having to slash the price just to get rid of it. High liquidity gives you freedom. It gives you options. Low liquidity, on the other hand, can mean you're stuck, even when you really need to make a move. You can almost think of it as a little three-part test for any asset. Is there someone ready to buy it? Can you both agree on a fair price without a huge back and forth? And can you get the deal done quickly? If you can say yes to all three, then you're looking at a pretty liquid asset. Okay, our last tool is, it's a big one. This is a type of security that has some of the highest potential risk out there, but it also has some of the highest potential for reward. It really is the definition of a double-edged sword in finance. We are talking about derivatives. Now, don't let the name intimidate you. At their very core, derivatives are simply contracts. They're agreements designed to pass risk and the potential reward from one person to another. They're basically a way of making a bet on what's going to happen in the future. And these aren't just for some traders on Wall Street. A farmer could use a derivative to lock in a price for their crops, guaranteeing they don't lose money. An investor might use one to protect their portfolio if they think the market's about to dip. Even a city could use one to insure its bonds. There are incredibly powerful tools for handling uncertainty. So this brings us all the way back to that first question and our final section here. Once you know about all these tools and all this risk, it really forces you to face a critical distinction, the huge difference between investing and gambling. And it all comes down to your mindset and your approach. The line between the two really boils down to why you're doing it and how you do it. An investor's goal is to build wealth over time, and it's all based on analysis and strategy. A gambler, their goal is recreation. It's about the thrill of placing a bet. But the biggest difference is how they look at risk. An investor works to manage it, to calculate it. A gambler just accepts it as part of the fun. So things like betting on a horse race, playing cards for money, or buying a lottery ticket, those fall squarely into the gambling camp. Why? Because the outcome is almost completely left to chance. It's the total opposite of the calculated strategic approach of real investing. At the end of the day, if you take just one thing away from our time together, please let it be this. Real financial confidence doesn't just come from memorizing a bunch of vocabulary. 
It comes from truly understanding the strategy behind the words. So we're going to end right where we began, but with a new challenge for you. You now have the concepts. You know about risk, liquidity, and that bright, clear line between investing and gambling. The only question left is, how are you going to apply them?